It's a new week right here on Lockdown Spurs, which means a weekly visit by the doctor. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs, right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hope everybody's having a great start to the week, and we'll get you started as well right here on Locked On Spurs. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts. So what are we talking about today? Well, as you heard a little while ago, Dr. Ryan McCorkle is back for his weekly house call right here on Locked On Spurs, and we're going to be talking about the All-Star break. Why uh, this extended break is going to be good for the Spurs, the Spurs players, even the coaching staff, the mental and the uh, physical side of things. Also, why it's good for you to take a break every once in a while. And then also the possible return of Devin Vassell. In the doctor's opinion, how would he handle Vassell's uh, return to the court after such a long break? Is going to bring him in. He is Dr. Ryan McCorkle. He is an ER doc at St. David's Medical Center and the Austin Emergency Center. He's also with the Backstage Medical and Concierge Medicine Practice. Doctor, welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. I heard uh, you also get uh, about a week, week and a half vacation too, right? Is that true? For your busy schedule? <laughs> well, yeah, I guess uh, an ER doc's uh, vacation is a little little different. When we, uh, when we don't work, we don't get paid. So you just uh, you stack your shifts up work uh work a certain number ahead of time so that you can uh take off a little stretch so i try to take off two weeks every year yeah well what do, what does a doctor do for uh for his break yeah, what do you do hit the gym go for a run what do you do well, well my tradition is for my my kid's birthday which is the, the first week in july um mm-hmm. they're out of school so every year i take them somewhere new somewhere in the world and we do the last week of june the first week of july because that's a way you, you can kind of take two weeks off and not have it hit your paycheck so so hard <laughs> so, so we do uh we've done portugal uh we've done italy we did mexico and then we um we took a, a road trip through the grand canyon out to disneyland and then another one we just drove the whole pch um right. And they're 12, so that's kind of what we've done since they were uh, about seven or eight. Uh, and that's that's the the Griswold family tradition over here with uh, with the doctor ER doctor schedule. Well, uh, you know, I guess kind of keeping with that theme, uh, there are several Spurs that will be taking a vacation away from San Antonio during this All Star break. I think Malachi Bratton, Brandon said that he's going overseas or, or he's going somewhere. He's just going somewhere far away from San Antonio. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the Spurs are also going to do that as well, as well as the coaching staff. But with the all-star break here, now's the chance for the Spurs to heal up. I think we beat to death the Langford injury. Of course, Trey Jones was uh, nicked up. Uh, Sohan came back from his injury. Nevertheless, despite the losing record, this team and the players has gone through their share, fair share of, getting bit by the injury bug. So why, what, I guess, what if you're the, you're in the Spurs doctor uh, staff, what are you telling these guys during this next week, week and a half away from the court? I think what, what pretty much every coach, every training staff is going to tell um, these people is to take your break, you know, take the vacation and get away, get away from, from basketball, give your mind a break, give your body a break. Um, because obviously overtraining is real for, for our listeners and definitely for, for NBA players. So getting a, uh, mm-hmm. getting away from basketball, you know, obviously you want to tell them, you don't, don't just go eat everything. I mean, cause you can, you can really affect your conditioning and, and, uh, and your, your overall health if they just go and eat whatever whenever for you know Mm -hmm. a solid 10 days um and and don't exercise at all so so maybe you know take a several day break of doing nothing they get plenty of cardio they're not going to lose that much conditioning over that Mm -hmm. course maybe still keep an eye on what you eat but get away from the court get away from basketball give your mind and body a break i think that's the advice everybody is going to give to everybody who's not participating in the all-star festivities yeah, and I don't want to be a downer here, but you know, before the break started, Popovich really lit into them, whether it had been during the game and after the game, where he basically called them out. 
you know, he didn't say the word soft, but he said the word soft. He said this team <laughs> needs to be a little bit more of the defense, be defensive minded. And he also, uh, Malachi Brown also said that Pop told them that he wants them to think about what's been going on, wants them to think about playing defense, rebounding. That long way from the court, the mental side of things. This team started the break and is going to start the break, uh, will resume the break with a 14 game losing streak. For you know, how, how, how do you balance? relaxing yet knowing mentally you're on a bad team that sucks quote unquote Popovich and now you come back to probably more of the same yeah so I think that's why getting that mental break is important and then I think Popovich riding pretty hard right before is because they he knows they're about to get a break and you know it, when you're in a season like this four, you know 14 straight losses and and knowing kind of the trajectory of where we're, where we're headed and where we've been headed, uh, you can understand the losing, but you can't lose that, that toughness aspect that Pop has been talking mm-hmm. about. You can always put forth the effort to play defense, to rebound, and everybody else can just observe and say, you know, they don't have the, the talent, the experience uh, to compete and put wins together, but it doesn't mean that the effort shouldn't be there. And, so making sure that that effort is there and they're putting putting it forth for with rebound and defense every night is is a different animal. So I think getting that in the back of their mind before they take a break is just like, hey, when you come back, your body should be rested, but you have to understand. I know this is a grind. I know losing is hard on your on your your mind, but uh, we still got to put the effort forth every night. And so I think that's what his expectations for the rest of the season is not more wins but the mm-hmm. effort has to be consistent and be there every night. Yeah, that effort is all but, at least in the last 14 games, is all but gone. Remember early in the season, that competitive, remember the whole, oh, you, you know, the ray of hope, the shining light at the end of the tunnel, the silver lining and the losses were, they were competitive, they were competitive. Look, they went to Philly and beat Philadelphia. Look, they took, they went to the Bucks and they beat the Bucks in San Antonio, all that stuff, and that's kind of gone. Now they're getting just curb stomped. They're the worst defensive team in the league. They're they're giving up 125 plus points a night. Their offense sputters. Um, yeah, I think the break is going to be good for them mentally and physically as well. But on the physical side, and we'll get to Devin Vassell in just a few minutes. But you know, Langford is still out. And Jones was hurt. But you even said it yourself. You didn't anticipate any of these injured players to come back before uh, the All Star break, not including Devin Vassell. Correct. Well, I mean, what's the benefit of pushing somebody back when you can uh, give them the opportunity to have an extended uh, recovery period by letting it go through the All Star break? I don't think there was any upside to to bringing somebody back at you know even eighty five ninety percent. For a couple of games before the All Star break, when you can let them completely recover till after the break, so I did not expect to see any of those folks back until after the break. I think that's what we're seeing now. Right. And we talked about you know the the effort not being there and things being different than they were early in the season and how bad they've been defensively. But if you if you look, you know it's a, it's a different group. You know we got some of our new acquisitions scoring the majority of the points. We lost you know the defensive heart and soul with Jakob and you know, not only are they probably worn down mentally from losing, but it's also that, you know, they're, you're not in the foxhole with those people that you've been in with all season. Mm-hmm. Now there's new faces and there's old faces and a lot of the leadership of the team is, has been traded away. And while you feel, you know, good for them and good for their, their careers and their, what's best for their families, it's really going to be hard for the ones that were left behind for lack of a better word to yeah. still put forth that effort every night that's going to take some some coaching up by, by pop and the and the team because that's going to take a toll mentally and this is a good segue into talking about just the the listener right now you me those that are clicking play right now on this show anybody why is it important to take breaks away from the daily grind what what are the benefits physically and mentally autobots roll out Nissan's most electric player of the week this week is brought to you by the all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria. 
And today's Locked On Spurs Nissan Most Electric Player of the Week is going to be Jeremy Sohan. He is at, well, he was out in Utah for the 2023 NBA All-Star Rising Stars game. Really soaked it in, you know, representing the Spurs. Talked about how he's still in awe about the Alamo Dome and the fan turnout. And as a matter of fact, that was his welcome to the NBA moment. And also felt that uh, Malachi Branham should have joined him out in Utah. Played great. Played great for Team Joaquin out in Utah. And all in all, the future is looking bright for Jeremy Sohan. He is Nissan's most electric player of the week right here on Locked On Spurs. And I want to talk to you about the Nissan Aria Electric. Brilliantly fierce, fiercely elegant, stunningly powerful, elegantly powerful. And the concept well delivers on the duality, a combination of fierceness and elegance, beautiful but strong. The 2023 Nissan Aria packs pin to your seat power with premium intelligence, all-in-one EV. The all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria, the EV for people who love to drive. Shop now at NissanUSA.com. Autobots, roll out. I mean, you have to. We are not creatures who are just made to work and produce, you know, and that's all that our existence is so it's important that people get a break and that's what they work for you work for the opportunity to take a break to enjoy your life to enjoy experiences and it's the same for even for these people who are making an incredible amount of money quote unquote playing a game it is still it's their job and after you know the season is long and that's what the all-star break is for it is a everybody needs a break no matter how quote unquote fun their job is or how much money they have, they still need a break, you know, from doing it month after month after month. They get the off season, but mm-hmm. still no, nobody is, is made to go that long uh, without having a break. And the same with the listener, not only from their jobs, but also exercise is important. And there's nothing wrong with going out and breaking a sweat, doing something every day for an hour, you know, right. and you can, you can do that on a quote unquote day off. But if you're just, if you're in there doing your gym time, banging out your weight routine, you know, spending your time on the treadmill. Uh, it's important to even take a break from that. Uh, mm-hmm. your, your body needs a break. Your mind needs a break because you will not only over, you can overtrain. People who lift understand that you've got to alternate your muscle groups because you can't train the same muscle group every day. Same thing. You, you need a break. You need to try other things. Nothing wrong with you got to do nothing. You know, you can still go out and break a sweat, but do something different in a different way. Unless you're Dr. Ryan McCorkle, who can weightlift every day, every body part, and look like Arnold Schwarzenegger at the end of the night. That's why this is an audio medium, Jess. No one can prove <laughs> or disprove that t- statement. He is Dr. Ryan McCorkle right here on Locked on Spurs, making his weekly house call right here on the on the uh, podcast. He is with the St. David's Medical Center and the Austin Emergency Center, as well as Backstage Medical and Concierge Medicine Practice. Follow him on Twitter at Austin ER Dog. We're talking about the All-Star break, why it's beneficial for the Spurs players, coaching staff, and you, the listener. Now, the coaching staff as well. Popovich, I'm pretty sure he's exercising a lot of patience, a lot of patience with these kids. And I say kids because a lot of them are 19 years old, early 20s, mid-20s, you know, there is that that well now famous chat that Pop had after the uh, loss against the Hornets right before the break, saying, you know, that this team sucks defensively; they're not there any at all. But he also added something else too, um, is that he said this whole thing about them being young that's getting old already. And that was the first time I've heard that from Popovich this year. A very patient Popovich. Is there, what do you have yeah. to say about for the coaching staff? like Popovich that are having to exercise so much patience with these guys and why this break is good for even them. For sure. I and mean, everybody who's, who's been a parent, you got to exercise a whole lot of patience. And, and, and it's funny. Break, Popovich did bring, bring that up too. He said, he goes, he, he compared it to being a parent. <laughs> well, that's, I, I didn't hear that, but that's exactly the first thing I thought of too. Yeah. Is for sure. And, um, I think we just talked about needing a break from training the same way every, every time. And I think that's can be said for Popovich as well. You know, he's for lack of a better cliche climbed every mountain you can climb in the, in the NBA coaching career. And this is something different for him. And maybe that is its own challenge and reward um, is doing something different, you know, having to deal with a young inexperienced team, 
um, trying to keep their effort consistent, understanding that this is a losing endeavor, uh, Mm -hmm. but building a foundation uh, for a future that you may or may not be part of. And that is a, that's a unique life challenge for him. And I'm sure it's on some level, it's nice to to be doing something different in that way, but you Mm -hmm. also have to vary your messaging. You know, he's, we've been saying for now half the season, they're young, they're inexperienced. And I mean, it's ironic to say that saying they're young is getting old, but uh, (laughs) it's it's true. You can't just use the same go-to cliche all, all the time. Uh, A big part of coaching is your message. If it's the same, constantly eventually begins to fall on deaf ears so switching up that messaging you know concentrating on different things is you know part of why it pops a, a, a genius uh, in his field and so that's what you're going to see he's going to have to say okay the excuses can only be there for so long and mm-hmm. it can be an excuse for a loss it can't be an excuse for lack of effort right and you know that's i think and that's what endears us as fans to a team too you can lose as long as we say, you know what, our team goes out there and they play as hard as they can. They have so much heart, so much fight. You can get behind that, uh, mm-hmm. even if they're losing. But it's harder, if, like you said, if you look and say uh, the effort's not there every night. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 sometimes it is tough to watch these Spurs games. And I've said it to you before. I've said it to a lot of people that, you know, I don't care what the Spurs do, usually in the first half. Tell me what they do in the second half. Because they're usually competitive for – good two, two and a half periods, and then the wheels come off. So the good sign is, is that in the last few games, they've been kind of sustaining co- competitiveness a little bit longer, but it's still just not enough. It's either bad turnovers at the wrong time, mental mistakes, and then, of course, just getting outplayed. But all that just piles up on the mental side for them racking up the losses and the physical side of just the NBA grind. I mean, Jeremy Sohan, you know, Every time I talk to him, we talk about his rookie season. He keeps on saying over and over again, he goes, I already played more than my college games at this point of the already in the year. So it's all compacted in. So, uh, you know, it's good for the rookies too, to uh, let off some steam, to relax for Sohan. You know, a lot of expectations on him for even the guys that were out, you know, you had Roby, he was out with a right ankle sprain. Uh, we mentioned Eric Langford, Trey Jones. He was out with left foot soreness. So good news is, is that a lot of these injuries, doctor, they're not major that they need to rest and heal up from. But the only major one is Devin Vassell. Now, he's been out for weeks already with uh, with a left knee injury that requires surgery, and he's still recovering. I've seen him at Spurs games pregame. He's out there on the court in street clothes, but he's taking shots. Popovich is signaling that there's a good chance he could come back after this all-star break. Let's just talk about that. But now a doctor, you have a player. Let's just pretend he is your patient and he's projected to come back in about a week and a half, but he's been gone for a long time. Doctor, what, what is kind of like your top three things you want to see that you would like to see the Spurs do that you would do as a medical doctor in his return uh, on the court and off the court. Autobots roll out. Now I want to talk to you about Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all of the fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. Look, we just got through the holidays. If your goal is to eat a little healthier this year, well, then you need Built right now. Don't compromise taste when you got one thing going for you with Built, and that is it actually tastes good. It's healthy and actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you wouldn't even think they're good for you. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% of real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I don't know how Built does it, but they do. These bars take, taste like a candy bar while maintaining great macros. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. You know, you have to wait along, uh, off to the side any much longer. Look, I know for years they always been talking about going to built.com. You still go there, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section. Grab yourself a box of Built Bars. They have a four-bar box, cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. But if you're close to a Sam's Club, you can run in and grab yourself a 13-bar box with hit flavors such as brownie batter and churro. You can thank me later. Autobots, roll out. I think the biggest part is no matter what you're doing off the court, 
the conditioning of basketball shape is, is we've talked about this before, is, is a totally different animal. And so you're going to have to slowly work him back in to the basketball shape. You know, he may have been on a bike, you know, pushing his heart rate, you know, with all the measurables, keeping his cardiovascular fitness up. But it's not the same as basketball shape with the stopping and starting and having to wrestle uh, big guys and Mm -hmm. going five on five. So that's it's going to take slowly ramping it up when he does come back, getting into basketball shape so that you don't get overtired and start doing movements on a surgically repaired knee uh, that aren't your usual movements because you're you're overtired and not in basketball shape and then mm-hmm. re-injure yourself. So I think they're going to be real. They'll closely monitor his minutes with a gradual increase for that reason, for that purpose. And also the same reason why I don't think we'll see him until I never, I didn't think once he went out and he had the arthroscopic surgery, I assume that their target would be after the all-star break. Cause mm-hmm. as we talked about ad nauseum, uh, no reason to push him back sooner than that. And I think it was also good. You pointed out with Jeremy, your conversations with Jeremy Sohan, exactly what you and I talked about on two earlier podcasts is the rookie wall and him confirming that, that the rookie wall, the, the definition is now you've played more games than you've ever played in a, mm-hmm. in a whole year in your life. And that's when rookies hit the wall. So it's, we talked about that. We talked about the definitions and all those implications, but it's it's nice to hear Jeremy confirm that mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Uh, Vassell, you know, I know he's itching to go, you know, he, he's definitely binding that, the uh, you know, that the chance to jump in, but again, Popovich did not say, you know, immediately after, you know, the first game after the all-star break against Dallas, there was nothing like that. I mean, he, cause he could still set out another week after the all-star break, you, you know, and come back and, Again, you're right. The Spurs don't have any reason to rush him. It's not like, oh, God, they need a race for that number one spot in the playoffs. And there's nothing like that <laughs> at all. So uh, maybe it's a race to the bottom. That, that, that's if that's the goal. But for Vassell, right. though. Another reason to give him all the yeah, time in the world. Exactly. And if we'll do the all-star break, he won't have those people available to, you know, the other NBA bodies to do the three-on-three work, the five-on-five work that you do when you're coming back from an injury before you come back to a to full game, period. Mm-hmm. So you're right. It could be a little bit after the All-Star break because they may want to wait for the team to come back from the All-Star break, then have him go through it with teammates, those three-on-three drills, five-on-five drills, before they're ready to put him back into a game. You brought up something right now that I have on my checklist here that I want to ask you about Vassell's return is – the mental side. Now I know mentally he's ready. I get that, but there's also the mental side of you're in, you're back in the the court, Devin, but you're aware your knee just had surgery and the favoring it and, and being nervous about planting hard on it or making a sharp cut. Is that something you've had to talk with your patients, uh, athletes that you deal with about having to get beyond that mental side of, Oh no, I'm going to hurt myself again if I do this exact same thing that got me in the first got me in this situation in the first place. Uh, absolutely. I had this conversation all the time. Um, for NBA players it's a reason why we're talking about not having them come back until they're 100%. Because if they're not at 100%, even if you are at 100%, there's still the mental tendency to favor the injured leg and to be wary of making the same movements that led to that injury. That's ingrained in your brain. It's your body doing what it does naturally, trying to protect itself. But it, it does, it, you, people do more damage when they favor uh, an injury. You have this talk with, with lay people all the time that aren't NBA athletes. The, the tendency is when you tear an ACL that you tear the other one within two years. And mm-hmm. it's because people favor it. and it's very difficult to talk them out of that. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's the danger um, is that we, we want to protect our bodies, but it, it, we end up doing counterproductive things and causing mm-hmm. ourselves further injury. Yeah. And that's probably a big reason why the Spurs delay returns uh, for players that have been injured is to make sure that not only physically okay, but mentally ready. Okay. And, you know, unless you're a, like, uh, you know, a crazy fellow like Mono Ginobili, it was, you know, Popovich would tell stories that Mono would flat out lie to him and the coaches <laughs> and the doctor staff that he's 100% he's ready to go. And he put him out there and, and Mono is playing with a broken elbow. Like, no joke, he played with a broken elbow against the Grizzlies. 
and Popovich would say like, no, nah, he lied to everybody. But so there's that. But uh, barring that, you know, I, I don't think the the Spurs are going to, you know, put Vassell in a position where he'll re-enter himself immediately. And he's been away from the court for a while. He's been on the court pregame, shooting around, albeit in street clothes. So it looks like all signs are pointing to his return. Hopefully it's just for a cup of coffee, though, Doctor, because that race to the bottom is is heating up between Spurs and Rockets and uh, who's the other team? The Pistons? So Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, Devin, take, take an extra two weeks. Don't worry about Devin. <laughs> relax, we're clear- relax. Yes, we're clearly doing our best to uh, to yeah, lead that race to the bottom for sure. But yeah, there's, a, is, there's an approach somewhere between expecting everybody to be a Manu when there's only one Manu in the world, right, exactly. and how you having Kawhi PTSD on how right. you you know approach that injury. So there's yeah. there's a reasonable mid midway that the Spurs are, are adopting for uh, how to approach uh-huh. injuries for 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 both kinds of of folks. I'm glad you brought that up. Think about that. The Spurs, they've had players on both ends of the spectrum. They had Manu who would lie about his injuries and just because he wanted to get out and play to the point where he lost one of his fellows, if you know what I mean, (laughs) doctor, and played (laughs) through that and was okay with that and joked about it, how he said, I already have kids, so I was good. But he still played during, (laughs) even for a man, losing that part of his body. Then you had Kawhi Leonard, who if he just had a, you know, a little twinge in his knee, that was it. He was shut down. He couldn't go. So, yeah, Spurs have had one end of the spectrum to another when it comes to players. But, Doctor, we cannot let let you go without a quick sneaker talk with you. I love having these sneaker talks with you. By the way, but I have some sneaker news for you. Usually you have. uh, Yeah, usually you drop me the news. but I'm going to drop you the news. The Keldon Johnson's uh, uh, signature line is now available in the United States. Very cool. We're we're like at the usual shoe outlets or where? no 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 like these independent retailers that have online websites that are available in the united states you know that some websites say if you're in the united states you can't order from here you know um right but slowly but surely uh online like independent outlets like not your major outlets like your Foot Locker or new balance um uh, they're starting to um uh have them for uh fans of the kj uh new line they're not his Very entire cool. yeah they're not his entire collection they're the one that he they're the the one pair that he wears a lot, which is a little bit little bit of splash of the fiesta colors. And then the other one is kind of a um they call it the taco, but it's basically the Mexican flag colors just splashed everywhere. Okay. Those are those are the two that are available. So all the other variants and colorways are not available. But yeah, so little by little, I think Spurs fans will be able to get the hold if they want to a hold of some Kelvin Johnson sneakers. And I think you said you might get some or you that's on your list. The Kelvins, no, I, I, was, I was thinking about the Lucas and the Jaws. The, the Kelvins, not, not not my my cup of tea, but they're very. I love the uh, the colorways and how how specific they are for the Spurs. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm still deciding what I think about the the new approach to uh, sneakers from NBA players with the just infinite number of colorways. And it seems like yeah. there's a new one every couple of days for Luca, for Ja, and also for Kelvin. I think Kelvin's probably got 10 or 12 different colorways yeah. he's worn since the beginning of the, the yeah. season. Yeah. You know, where yeah. with Jordan, you got, you got a home colorway, an away colorway, and a playoff colorway, and maybe mm-hmm. an all-star game. And right. that was basically at about three to four a year. And now mm-hmm. you're talking about, you know, fifteen twenty per year, yeah. and you know I think it's cool. And as long as it's something that the player just, hey, I like this, I want to do this, then then great. And it's not just a complete marketing ploy to sell more uh, more sneakers <laughs> to, to folks who are complete. Right. Yeah. I need everyone. Yeah, and and, and for those who do not know, uh, Kelvin Johnson sneakers, uh, they're they're uh, in China. There's a, it's a Chinese uh, sneaker company. I don't, I, the name escapes me right now, but if you Google it, you'll find it. And, but they only limited it to be sold in China, but now they're starting to come out little by little, uh, for the American market as well. But you did show me those, uh, John Morant and wow, you weren't kidding. They are pretty cool. And they had that special one with the Swarkovski crystals that was, uh, teased this week. That looks, uh, pretty awesome and will probably be uh, pretty pretty difficult to get a hold of 
But yeah, did, that's a, that's did I hear you correctly say that Jaws having too many colorways? Did, did I hear you say that right? <laughs> I don't know if it's too many. I mean, it's yeah. too many for the average consumer. You uh-huh. know, if there's some kid out there who's like, I want all, you know, I want Jaws shoes, and every time there's a new colorway, you know, you can't spend you know, two hundred dollars on on a shoe when there's fifteen or twenty different right. colorways a season. Yeah. Um. So I, I wouldn't say too many. You know, if they're if, if the players enjoying it, then then great. As long as it's not just a way to sell more sneakers to to twelve year olds right. who are having to buy fifteen or twenty colorways. Yeah, and then with the All Star game just completed, you know, yesterday, you got to figure there was a lot of new colorways introduced during that game. Whether it be in the Rising Star Challenge, whether it be in the G League All Star game, or the All Star game, the dunk contest. I mean. Sneakers, the the well, the up and coming sneaker lines really get pushed during this break, doesn't doesn't it? Yeah, that's been a long standing tradition, though. At least that, that's nothing new. Is that most major um, players who have a sneaker deal put a, get a special edition for the All Star Game? You know, mm-hmm. a red, white, and blue usually variation, red and blue, mm-hmm. um, and that started with Jordan, and it's the same all through with LeBron and. And KD and and everybody else always get the special edition for the All Star Game. You um, and you haven't had since we last spoke last week. You haven't had any new additions to your collection. Uh, no, not since last week. Just those okay. ones I'm still working on customizing those those Phantoms for Spurs, mm-hmm. um, and then the the Longhorn ones uh, and the Austin FC. Because I want to, I want to publicly, I want to publicly challenge Dr. Ryan McCorkle right here. I want to <laughs> see if he could create a one of a kind locked on Spurs colorway. Could that he cook this, one up? Yes, I can do that. I will enjoy doing that, and I will definitely post pictures of it when I get these anthems done. That yeah. will be the locked on Spurs. <laughs> I think. I think on one side is going to be. Uh, maybe just uh, a wording. They'll say Langford injury discussion again. <laughs> Here we go again. No, but I'll get it aside. Yeah, uh, you want to follow Dr. Ryan McCorko on his Instagram as well, which is Austin E M Doc. Why? Well, simply just because, and but also because that's where he posts all his sneaker photos. He has a really impressive collection. Uh, you know, I, I I admire sneakers. I can appreciate them. I'm not a collector. But uh, I definitely like the um, the hobby. Uh, I wish I could partake in it. I just never, I never got into it to that level, doctor. Like, like you or other friends I know. Like, I can appreciate it. If I see them at the stars. Oh, that's awesome! Or the, I see the players running. That's I'll write about them. But I just never took that next step. But you take that well, next you, step. You are smarter and will have much more disposable income than those <laughs> of us who are cursed with this uh, this. Um, inherent need to, to collect things i have that collector mentality and i've had it you know since started with baseball well, cards when you're a kid yeah and it's it's uh it's fun but it's also expensive and <laughs> and uh, well, a little bit of a compulsion sometimes right right right. well i mean i I'm, i should not be throwing stones as well because although i i don't have a compulsion to collect sneakers i have a very bad uh collecting compulsion to collect uh, action figures i love action figures like my collection, oh, cool. my collection is just more like a museum. Uh, there's some points where I'm looking at my closet and I'll say, what the hell was I thinking? I mean, where are my clothes? I mean, it's just nothing but figures. I mean, I have figures that are from such and such comic con years ago to this and to that. And then I have those days where I get curious and I go on eBay and I'll say, I wonder how much this was worth. I've got this one back in 2015, for example. I look going, okay. Maybe I should sell it now. I mean, it's to that's that awesome. point. Yeah, yeah. So that that's my component. It's it's, it's bad, but the good news, doctor, like is I got it better. Too? No, 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 no. I'm talking about like your DC figures, your Marvel figures. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Your your anime figures. Your um, Star Wars. They, they, your Star Wars figures. Yes, the Masters of the Universe, like that. Oh my goodness. And, and to me, I see that as kind of like little mini alt art sculptures that you'll find in a museum <laughs> like yeah. at the moma you know but the good news is i've For calmed sure. down a lot in the last month and a half i said this collection is getting out of hand i have to stop but once in a while i'll get the itch and i'll say let me go to this website and see what's new and i say do i dare i say no bad jeff don't do that 
Don't do that. I think it's yeah. I think it's very cool that you do that. I think one of the coolest things when you're having a conversation with somebody that you kind of yeah. just met or whatever, when you find that thing and everybody's got that thing mm-hmm. where whatever their their compulsion is, their collecting thing mm-hmm. is, to see their eyes light up and all of a sudden, you know, the the conversation just free flowing because they're so passionate about whatever you know action figures whatever when you hit on that sneakers yeah and yeah see them light up that way that's really cool that that we're all we all share that all all humans share that on some level absolutely absolutely once again he is dr ryan mccorkle he is with the saint david's medical center and the austin emergency center he's also with the backstage medical and concierge medicine practice anything new on uh, with backstage anything new uh, fans gotta be checking out well i am pretty Pretty excited for today, Jeff. Here in about two hours, I'm headed over and I get to sit on the side of the stage with Bruce Springsteen as he and the E Street Band play here at at Moody Theater, or uh, Moody uh, Center Mm -hmm. on the UT campus. Um, You know, they are in their 70s now, so they they like a a physician as near as possible to to when they're out there performing for three, three and a half hours at that age, which is incredible. So I'm going to be sitting on the stage, and this is one of the things I'm most excited about. I I don't think we talked about it before when you asked about vacations and things. The other thing I'm kind of obsessive about is the band Pearl Jam. So I've Mm -hmm. followed them, seen 80 shows all over the world. When I do use my vacation time, uh, a lot of times I would follow the band and Eddie Vedder's solo, and I collect all their vinyl. And so music is really important to me in concerts and live music. Mm -hmm. So besides meeting Eddie and having him tell this story about me and my family on stage and getting to hang out with Jason Isbell backstage, this is like my top three moments. So Eddie Vedder, Jason Isbell, and now getting to sit on the stage with Bruce Springsteen. So I am pumped for tonight. Look look at Dr. Ryan dropping names like that. I, I heard that. You know, when Eddie just talks about my family on stage, you know, it's something that happens to everybody. You know, everybody has that experience. But anyway, uh, uh, once again, we thank you, uh, Dr. Ryan McCorkle, for taking time out and joining us here on Lockdown Spurs. We'll be back next week, that is for sure. And for everybody else, thanks for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day, free and available wherever you get podcasts. It is the All Star break. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're not stopping here at all at Lockdown Spurs. We'll have something new and fresh for you by the time the good boys get back on the court. So for Dr. Ryan McCorkle, I am Jeff Garcia. We're putting a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. 